Good day. The Takuno gift offers a rare and revealing window into the world of Meiji color woodblock printing at a pivotal moment in history. In 1889, T. Tokuno, Tokuno Susho, more familiarly, more familiarly read Michimasa, head of the Japanese Bureau of Engraving and Printing in Satsu Kyoku, presented the Smithsonian in Washington with a remarkable group of printing blocks, color prints, sample pigments, and related tools. Tokuno provided a document in English with specific details about Japanese methods of block cutting and color printing. My presentation will describe the history of exhibiting the Tokuno gift at the Smithsonian, and I will consider the reception of Tokuno's commentary, which was published in the Smithsonian Annual Report of 1892. As edited by the U.S. National Museum's founding curator of graphic arts, Sylvester Curler, Tokuno's explanation of the process influenced woodblock artists in the West during the following decades. Curler placed these objects on exhibition <clears throat> almost as soon as they were received in the autumn of 1889, and they were featured as part of the permanent graphic arts exhibition of printmaking techniques for more than a century. The mandate for the Division of Graphic Arts, the oldest print collecting unit in the Smithsonian, is to document and interpret printing and printmaking in all periods and countries. The collection, now held in the Smithsonian's American History Museum, remains international in scope, and it includes prints, plates, blocks, and tools representing many graphic processes over time. From 1889 until 1913, the Tokuno objects were shown in the U.S. National Museum building. Then the graphic arts exhibit was moved to the Smithsonian Castle building for several decades. The two life-size mannequins were made for the exhibition, the printer's figure in about 1917, and the block cutter in 1919. <clears throat> After 1964, the Graphic Arts Department moved to the new Museum of History and Technology, which was rebranded in 1980 as the American History Museum. All of these objects were removed from view shortly before the American History Hall of Printing and Graphic Arts closed in 2003. The history of 19th and early 20th century museum presentations of Japanese objects in the West is not well documented, but we believe that this Smithsonian display comprises one of the earliest exhibitions of Japanese woodblocks, prints, and tools in the United States, if not the world, especially since it was presented as a didactic sequence to show the processes involved. And I would be grateful to hear your thoughts about this question. The document received with the collection is an account of Japanese woodblock cutting and printing prepared by Tokuno and Tsukiyama Shotaro, his associate in the Bureau of Printing. The manuscript, handwritten in English, offers a clear explanation of the methods used for producing Japanese color woodblock prints in the third quarter of the 19th century. It describes the wood used for the blocks, as well as the pigments and papers used and provides information on cutting and printing the blocks. The accompanying drawings demonstrate the roles of the block cutter and the printer and the layout of their tools. After receiving Tokuno's original account, Curler wrote to him several times with questions and received detailed replies. He incorporated Tokuno's responses and reorganized the material, which had been received in a number of letters and memoranda. But he adhered closely to Tokuno's statements in the published report. Curler also added some comparative notes of his own on the history of relief printing in the West. The Tokuno donation comprises about 200 objects. The major gift received in 1889 <clears throat> with two smaller editions in 1890. There were 44 tools used for cutting and printing woodblocks, 
with 17 samples of pigments used for the colors. The tools appear to be new, so presumably they were required to make up the complete package. Three key blocks and proofs, plus 21 color blocks, most carved on both sides, and 71 progressive color proofs and prints demonstrated the production of a triptych identified in Tokuno's reports as Inaka Genji. Seven colored drawings showed the implements and the process. These guided the assembly of the printer's bench that came with the gift. They were also used as models for Smithsonian preparators to build a block cutter's table and to position the mannequins that were later added to the exhibition. A second series of 35 progressive proofs represented a botanical image, Nandina Domestica, designed by the painter Tsubaki Chinson, with a, and a few single sheet prints and illustrated books demonstrated the use of woodblock printing to replicate pen and brush painting. In recent years, several scholars have visited the American History Museum to view the collection, and we have learned a good deal from their research. The 2012 Awash in Color French and Japanese Prints exhibition at the Smart Museum of the University of Chicago included some blocks, tools, and progressive prints borrowed from the Inaka Genji series. In an essay for the catalog, Andreas Marx of the Minneapolis Institute of Arts discussed the American history triptych and compared it with an earlier impression in the Japan Ukiyo-e Museum in Matsumoto, Nagano Prefecture. He noted that it was designed by Utagawa Kunitaru II, and the inscription on the verso of the center key block explains that the original design was by his teacher, Kunisada, a Genji picture belonging to the subgenre of ukiyo-e called Genji pictures, Genji-e, after Lady Murasaki's classic novel of the 11th century. It was inspired by the popular serial novel published between 1829 and 1842 by Ryute Tanahiko, a rustic Genji by a fraudulent Murasaki, Nisei Murasaki Inaka Genji with black and white illustrations by Kunisada. The triptych's title, Farmers Know, was one of an intended series on the four occupations, the social hierarchy of gentlemen, samurai, farmers, artisans, and merchants, Shino Kosho. But the farmers is the only one of the four known to have been published. In 2019, the Japan Ukiyo-e Museum, recognizing the historical importance of the original triptych, donated one of their two pristine copies to the Smithsonian as a gift. This enables a close comparison of the version reprinted 20 years later and reveals dramatic differences in the colors. One explanation may be the damaging effects of sun exposure over the many years that the Smithsonian's prints were on display. The final progressive prints, those printed using the most colors, were the most damaged, and they have not survived. As Henry Smith of Columbia University observed, the darkening of orpiment yellow would affect the green mixture in particular, which is the most striking difference with the Matsumoto impression. As Dr. Marx was the first to have noticed, the original triptych was issued by the publisher and print seller Daikokuya Matsuki Haikichi, and it bears a censor's seal of the first month of 1869. Professor Smith has recently drawn my attention to a Matsuki advertising broadsheet of 1890, which references his exporting various woodblock printing tools and pigments for display at the National Museum in Washington, and suggests a major role for Matsuki in sourcing the Tokuno gift. While I have been able to document much of the Smithsonian side of the story, questions remain about Tokuno's connections with his Japanese associates to acquire the objects selected for shipment to the United States. 
Five pigments arrived with the main portion of the gift in 1889, said to be those generally used for the most characteristic type of Japanese printing, such as the Inaka Genji. The individual pigments were prepared in small glass vials, and I will describe them using, mostly, Curler's language as based on Tokuno's communications. From left to right, they are the white lead, Tono Tsushi, red, Yoko, a kind of scarlet thought to be carmine, made from cochineal insect, imported. Formerly, the best type of safflower, called Kijomi, was used, but Yoko became popular due to the high price of safflower. Blue, Barrow Eye, Prussian blue. Formerly, I Ro, indigo paste, or Igami from dayflower was used, but since the introduction of Prussian blue from Europe, its use has become quite general. Yellow, Kio, is orpiment, arsenic sulfide. Formerly, Zumi, extracted from yellow wood, turmeric, ukon, and yellow ochre, odo, were used, but orpiment has taken their place. The black pigment, identified as Tsukizumi, has not survived. And we don't know why the vial that now contains the Prussian blue is labeled as Joboku, superior sumi. Described by Tokuno as the best kind of India ink made in China or Japan, in Nara, it actually survived, arrived with the second gift. In 1890, in response to Curler's many questions about the pigments, Tokuno sent a dozen additional colors, several of which he identified as those used for printing the progressive proofs of the Nendina Domestica. These are the white, gofun, calcium carbonate or white chalk, pink, shoenji, identified as cochineal in the report, but according to Professor Smith, this is actually lac from a different insect. It was imported from China as cotton felt, dyed red, and then soaked in water to release a pink liquid that was evaporated and condensed. Blue, Ibo, the indigo stick, was ground and mixed in separate solutions with glue and water, a very painstaking and exacting process. Red, Shu, vermilion, Henry Smith remarked that for the Nandina, it is likely that the red berries were printed in vermilion, the prized red used by painters, but too costly to be used routinely in popular prints. Two other Nandina colors, the brown, Taisha Bo, a hard brown stick of red ochre, worked like I Bo, and yellow, Shio, imported gamboge, have not survived. Other colors which Tokuno stated were not used for the Nandina prints, included <clears throat> red, Kijomi, that expensive safflower, which suffered from light exposure, so its vial was wrapped in black paper, the red ochre, Bengara, and turmeric, Ukon. Three additional colors, yellow, Zumi, a dye wood extract, blue, Igami, from dayflower, from dayflower dyed paper, and blue, Iro, from indigo paste. Other colors, including the bless, that, that best black sumi from Nara, Joboku, and yellow ochre, Odo, have not survived. Professor Smith suggested to me that next to the Genji E blocks and progressive prints, the most important elements of the gift were the pigments, something available nowhere else. As he remarked, and as I have discovered in my research on other early exhibitions in the West, the tools are widely available elsewhere, and they differ very little from one collection to another. Tokuno may have offered different examples of prints and pigments to demonstrate a range from the brightly colored popular Nishkei to prints using a more nuanced and refined palette. The Tokuno publication is available online in several editions. The entire collection of objects is featured together on the American History website. Individual objects are also searchable online via the Smithsonian's Collection Search Center using the keyword Tokuno. I'm not a specialist on Japanese prints, but for more than three decades these works have been in my care. 
I developed a website for the Tokuno gift in part to examine its long-term display at the Smithsonian and to explore how exhibitions like this one have influenced the reception and popular appreciation of prints. The impact of the Tokuno gift has resulted more from the distribution of the printed report than from any evidence of visitors' responses or encounters with the objects on display. The report reached a wide audience, influencing artists and informing the growing community of connoisseurs and collectors of old ukiyo-e. It was cited with detailed explanations of the process in several works, including William Anderson's Japanese Wood Engravings of 1895 and Edward Strange's Japanese Illustration, A History of the Arts of Woodcutting and Color Printing in Japan, 1897. A German history of Japanese color woodcuts by Waldemar von Seidlitz, Geschichte des japanischen Farbenholzschnitts, was also published in 1897 and referenced the report. Tokuno's technical information directly assisted the efforts of Western artists who were creating color woodblock prints in the 1890s. Henry Smith will have already touched on this in his remarks on the internationalization of Japanese color woodblock technique in those years, but let me mention a few examples. In 1894, the British periodical The Studio published a detailed account of color woodblock printing, which included information from the Tokuno Report and an interview with British artist John Dixon Batten, who discussed his experiments with watercolor printing using wood and metal blocks. The print of Eve and the Serpent, designed by Batten and printed by Frank Morley Fletcher in 1895, is said to be the earliest example of a woodcut printed in England in the Japanese manner. Morley Fletcher later remarked that he and Batten used the Tokuno report as our textbook. He produced innovative color woodcuts and as an educator he guided the artwork of many students over two generations. He knew the Austrian artist and educator Emil Orlik, who shared his interest in the Japanese craft of block printing. Tokuno's re report inspired Orlik to travel to Japan in 1900, where he studied with a block, print, block cutter and printer. He produced portraits of these Japanese craftsmen with whom he studied like an apprentice. American exponents of Japanese printmaking included Arthur Wesley Dow, whose introduction to Hokusai's prints in 1890 inspired his interest in the Japanese style of composition. Dow knew the scholar Ernest Fenelosa, who oversaw the Japanese collection at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Curler, the Smithsonian curator who edited Tokuno's report, also served at the Boston Museum at this time, and Dow looked to him for information about the process. Dow traveled to Japan in 1903 to learn more. Unlike the Japanese practice they studied, Dow, Orlick, and others in the West embraced all three parts of the process, design, block cutting, and printing, in their experiments with traditional Nishkei printmaking. They carried these methods forward, and as Nancy Green of the Johnson Museum of Art, Cornell University observed, Dow was one of the first Western artists to use traditional Japanese woodcut technique to create modernist prints. In closing, May I say how very grateful we are for the resources provided by Tokuno's gift to the Smithsonian. The collection of woodblocks, prints, tools, and pigments represents a time capsule of the craft as practiced in the mid-Meiji period, when the color woodblock medium reached a new audience worldwide. Tokuno's report and the series of letters explaining the process in greater detail provided a very thorough account, which not only documented Japanese practice but also influenced woodblock artists into the 20th century. The gift continues to offer many important insights to artists and scholars today. Thank you.